Hello, and thank you for taking the time to listen to my AGM presentation for the AVI Japan Opportunities Trust. It's remarkable that despite this being our second annual general meeting, we have yet to hold a physical AGM at which we can meet shareholders face to face and answer any direct questions you may have. I sincerely hope that next year will be different and that we'll be, we will be able to meet face to face and hold a normal AGM. Before I proceed, uh, let me just point out this disclaimer, which I'd ask you all to take uh, note of. Over the next 10 minutes or so, I intend to discuss developments at AVI, the market environment in Japan, the progress of our portfolio, and the outlook for our investments in Japan over the coming few months. When we launched this company in late 2018, myself and Daniel Lee were the two members of the AVI Japan team. We traveled to Japan frequently to meet with companies and we supplemented our resources with some locally based experts on an as needed basis. As we have increased our activities in Japan and intensified our engagement activities, we have made a substantial investment in the AVI Japan team resource. We now have added four Japanese nationals to the team. Two experienced analysts will be based in London from July. One is currently working from Tokyo where she's working alongside our permanently based Tokyo consultant. In addition, we've been bolstering the analyst team at AVI generally, and some of this additional resource will be directed towards the Japan portfolio. So all in all, AVI's commitment to Japan and the investment opportunity there is demonstrated by this very substantial expansion in the team, which I expect will continue in the future. Our portfolio contains about 25 stocks, and whilst they're all different in terms of the businesses they operate in and the management teams who run them, they all share some common characteristics. They all have huge amounts of spare cash on their balance sheet. They are all trading at very low fundamental valuation multiples, and they all have substantial upside in their share prices in terms of the potential that we see. That is why we launched AJOT, in order to deliver that very substantial upside. Since launch, nothing has happened to alter that very substantial upside that we can look forward to. However, as we all know, during, the, during 2020, the world suffered a global pandemic that has impacted all our lives in so many different ways. In terms of the impact in Japan and on our portfolio, COVID had the effect of not only causing a temporary sharp decline in operating performance of our companies, but it also delayed all the shareholder engagement efforts that were being planned for spring 2020 by ourselves and by other investors. During 2019, we had enjoyed a number of corporate events that resulted in some of our por portfolio companies being taken over at prices substantially higher than where they had been trading. Other companies had benefited from, from a re-rating in their share prices as other investors recognized that undervaluation or the prospects of shareholder engagement being successful, which were then factored into other investors' analysis. 2020 was all set to continue on this path. But now, of course, with all the good things having been delayed, we have to start again. But despite a challenging 2020 in performance terms, what gives me a huge amount of confidence is a variety of factors that I intend to elaborate on in the coming slides. But importantly, whilst COVID has delayed a lot of the planned activity of last year, it has not derailed anything. And all the signs are that engagement activity and corporate activity generally are coming back with a vengeance. So let's start by looking at the operating environment. When we look around the world, as economies went into the initial lockdown last March, the vast majority, majority of companies suffered a massive shock to their operations. Sales and profits declined sharply. In some cases, this was a short, sharp shock. In others, it took time to play out. And unfortunately, in some cases, businesses will not recover fully ever. In stock market terms, what is important for share price recovery is the expectation that earnings are recovering 
or at the very least will recover. What is immensely important when looking at our portfolio is the strong evidence of a sharp recovery in earnings across the board that we have seen over the last two quarters. Our portfolios experienced a strong V-shaped recovery, and this underpins our valuation work and supports the thesis that, that our portfolio is extremely undervalued today. Indeed, several of our companies have reached profit levels now in excess of pre-COVID numbers, and the vast majority of companies are back to their pre-COVID levels of profitability. And yet, in many cases, share prices have not recovered to those levels. When we look at the overall valuation picture, what we see is a portfolio of companies that not only have substantial cash balances on their balance sheet, but on average, the amount of cash has grown year on year by about 5%. So in a tough environment, in a tough operating environment, our companies have continued to generate free cash flow. In valuation terms, on average, there's been a small increase in the EV EBIT multiple. That our, that our portfolio is trading at, but that is more to do with portfolio changes than a genuine shift in actual valuation. When compared to the broader small cap index, our portfolio has not enjoyed the same re-rating as the wider market. And it's for this reason that we consider our portfolio companies to be trading with substantial upside, to be trading as cheaply as we've ever seen them, and really, the opportunity exists because the, the fundamental operations do not warrant that mispricing and that undervaluation. I showed you a few moments ago the V-shaped recovery we'd enjoyed and that our portfolio has not experienced the same valuation re-rating as the broader market. And in this slide, we highlight just four examples of companies that have seen resilience in their earnings during the past year that have strong business models. A number of them not really affected by COVID and by lockdown and others beneficiaries perhaps. And yet despite those relatively strong operating performances, the share prices have remained flat or have declined even. And these are at companies with very substantial cash balances as you see here and very low operating multiples that we believe are totally unwarranted. And so the obvious question is, why? Why do these companies, if they are genuinely so good, why do they trade so cheaply? And the answer really goes to the heart of our strategy. Many of our companies are small cap. They operate below the radar screen of most investors. There is very little research, if any, written about the majority of these companies. Some of them are relatively illiquid. And so in aggregate, our portfolio tends to be ignored, and that is why they trade fantastically cheaply. But in order to correct that undervaluation, we need to work hard to get management of these companies to do something about the low share price. And that is where shareholder engagement, shareholder activism, and the corporate governance code in Japan really come into play. And over the past few years, there has been a growing shift from investors to engage with companies in Japan and to buy into this opportunity. And this increase really has come both from domestic and from foreign activists. And it's been accompanied by so-called an increase in, in so-called activist events. These are things like the submission of shareholder proposals to company AGMs, tender offers, takeover bids, privatizations and the like. And this is really what feeds um, the excitement and the, and the potential for unlocking the huge amount of value in these kind of companies. And whilst many of these events were planned for 2020, many did not see the light of day because of COVID, because it was just inappropriate to submit shareholder proposals during a global pandemic, during a time when most economies around the world were in lockdown. But the good news is that they're coming back with a vengeance. And over the last few months, we've seen positive and clear evidence of this. There have been takeover bids, parent companies have bought in subsidiaries, and companies 
have started to resume share buybacks after they took a pause during lockdown. And when it comes to the submission of shareholder proposals, the end of June is really a key time. Most companies in Japan hold their AGMs at that time. And indeed, most of them hold them on the same day. And as we have bolstered our team at AVI, so we have been expanding our engagement efforts. In total, we're proactively engaging with 12 portfolio companies right now. Whilst we engage with all of our companies in terms of communicating, letting, letter writing and meeting, these 12 are the subject of intense efforts. They range from private dialogue about strategic initiatives we want to see implemented, to changes in corporate control, to the submission of shareholder proposals. In the same way that we at AVI are expecting to submit many more proposals than we have done in the past, at this year's AGM season, I expect other investors are pursuing similar plans. And I expect therefore that 2021 will be a record year for AGM activity. All of this bodes extremely well for investor interest to be redirected to areas of the market that have been overlooked, that are as cheap as ever, and particularly so, where there is evidence that things might be about to start to happen. Our approach to engagement has been evolving over the past three years. What started out as a focus on doing something about too much cash on balance sheets or asking companies to appoint more independent directors has progressed to a much more detailed analysis of the businesses we're invested in and the strategic and operational challenges and opportunities each company has. Fujitech, a global elevator and escalator manufacturer, was our largest holding for much of 2020. Our detailed public presentation was released in April last year and really sought to highlight to the company and to other investors via a 75 page presentation, the various corporate governance, operational and strategic enhancements we wanted to see the company adopt. Very pleasingly, management listened to what we said and at the end of the year published a new strategic plan that met many of our suggestions. As a consequence of that, the market has responded very well, the share price has re-rated and the share price has strongly outperformed uh, the rest of the broader Japanese market. And that just goes to show how the patient, constructive, long-term, detailed approach that we at AVI adopt does work and does enjoy the support and trust, which is so important in Japan, of the management, the companies that we are invested in. Our portfolio is made up, as I said, of almost 25 names, all of which have good quality businesses, lots of cash and are trading cheaply. And as I've said, we've, we're engaging with all of them. In terms of portfolio construction, as our engagement intensifies, so too does our weighting or concentration in particular names. And as you see here, over the last three months, there's been a bit of an evolution Fujitech had been our primary target during 2020. We consider it still to be undervalued, but there are other companies that are moving up uh, the portfolio rankings as we engage with these companies for the time being in private. And in some cases, some of that engagement will fall out into the public domain as we approach uh, AGM season. And with our enlarged team, a team on the ground in Japan, and a, and a whole host of different backgrounds and experiences now forming part of the AVI Japan team, we can look forward to increasing degrees of engagement and hopefully increasing levels of success. So as we approach the AGM season in Japan, we're hugely optimistic about the prospects for our portfolio. There is clear evidence of corporate activity and increased investor interest. We've already seen since September 2020 when the world came out of lockdown, a number of takeover bids, some hostile, some parent child subsidiary simplifications and evidence of a lot more um, pressure being brought to bear on, on companies. 
In terms of earnings, the forecast earnings of many of our companies are way too conservative. And the results that we're likely to see as the full year results come out in the next few weeks are likely to demonstrate just how cheap these companies are. In terms of corporate activity, there's more sign of foreign capital flows coming into Japan. And very importantly, the commitment of the regulators and the government to corporate governance reform and keeping the pressure on companies to do more for shareholders is continuing. And this, in the next few weeks, we'll see a revision to the corporate governance code that puts more pressure on companies to do the right thing for shareholders. So all in all, what we can look forward to is a very exciting AGM season where shareholders will express their views to management. But just as encouragingly, we, we're seeing evidence of companies beginning to, to do the right thing without waiting for AGMs, more buybacks, more focus on shareholder returns. So with that, I'll end. I thank you very much uh, for listening to me these past few minutes and would be delighted to take any questions. Um, and if you want to submit your questions to the email address that you see here, info at ajot.co.uk, we'll do our very best to reply to each and every question and get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. And I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible in the coming year.